Well, now, as a final note, almost an addendum to this unit, we're going to talk about solving and doing it mostly graphically a system of two nonlinear equations and two variables. Now, all I'm going to do is two, two examples to show you what's going on and give you a little bit of advice on how this is done. The important fact to note is that unlike all of the material on linear equations in systems, there's no standard technique here. There's no standard or general, if you like, technique. They're all different, which makes it generally a hard problem to solve a system of nonlinears. We will limit ourselves, as I say up here, to two nonlinear in two variables so that we can graph them, and that will be the key. Graphing helps. And since we have graphing devices, these become more reasonable to solve. Also, what it helps is imagination. Okay? Your imagination will help. How will that help? Well, because you must think about the, you, you will probably use the information that you have about solving systems of linear equations. But there will be things here that don't occur there, and you'll just have to see what might be a good idea and try it. And be sure and check all of your solutions, because again, extraneous solutions can occur here. All right. Well, let's get right into this. I'll show you an example here, and uh, we'll get started. I'm only going to do two examples here because, as I say, this is really sort of almost ad hoc work. 3x minus y equals minus 2, and 2x squared minus y equals 0. So in the first one we're looking at here, call that equation 1, equation 2, there's only one nonlinear equation. The second one is nonlinear. The first one, of course, is linear. Okay? So we'll start small. Solution. Well, let's look at how you would deal with this graphically. I said graphical uh, a technique is a good idea, so let's see what that will help. The first thing is, if I'm going to graph this, I want to rewrite these so that I can graph them easily. So my system now becomes solving for y in both of them. I'll let you check this out, but y is equal to 3x plus 2. That's pretty easy from here. And then the second one is y equals 2x squared. So here's 1 and 2, and now we recognize the graph of the first one is a line, and the graph of the second one is a parabola. It's a very familiar form. So we're starting with, although these are nonlinear, nice simple ones. If we look at the graph in the window minus 3 to 3 by minus 2 to 10, that seems to do the trick. Here is the picture you will see, something like this. There's my x-axis and my y-axis. And the parabola comes down to the origin and goes like that. After all, this is basically the x-squared parabola made a little bit more narrow by multiplying by 2. And then the line comes through something like that. It will cross here and here. And if you check, this point by trace will be approximately minus 0.5.5. That is to say, the minus 0.5 is the x, and the 0.5 is the y. The other point here will be approximately 2 and 8. And again, the 2 is the x, and the 8 is the y. So this is what we get by trying to graph these two. The parabola, obviously, is this curve, and the line is the other curve. And we can also try to attack this algebraically. We have two approximate solutions, and we might be satisfied with that. But let's go ahead and attack this algebraically. While we're moving here to this new page, let me m mention that in the previous page, it looked like there were two solutions. If you recall, in systems of linear equations, there are either 0 or 1. So when you deal with nonlinear, anything can happen. In the algebraic idea, I will try equating 1 equals 2. And why is that a good idea? Well, look back what we had. We had y equals this and y equals that. Why don't I set them equal to one another and solve for the appropriate x's? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, that's not something we would have tried before, but now it seems like a good idea. So I'll set 2x squared equals 3x plus 2. And the rest now is elementary. 
2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0, because that's just a plain quadratic. And we know how to solve these. So let's go ahead and run through that. Let's see, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 9 minus 4 times 2 times minus 2, which will be 25 if you run that through. Then x is equal to minus b plus or minus, that's determinants under the square root 4ac, under the square root all over 2a. That will be equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 25, that's why I calculate that first all over 2 times 2 is 4, so this is equal to 3 plus or minus 5, the square root of 25 is 5 over 4, and so I get two possible solutions. I get that this is equal to, let's see, um, 3 plus 5 over 4, which is going to be 8 over 4, which is 2, there's one solution, or 3 minus 5 over 4, which is minus 2 over 4, which is minus one-half, and there's my second solution. And then if I substitute these in, maybe call this one x1 and call this one x2 to keep them separate, then I can substitute to get the y1 and y2 that correspond to them, and substitute where? Well, into either equation. Let me go ahead and say into the original form or the uh, repeated form of 1, which was that nice linear expression. So I'm talking about y equals 3x plus 2. And so y1 will be 3 times 8 plus 2. I'm sorry, 3 times 2 plus 2, which is 8. And the y2 will be 3 times a minus 1 half plus 2 which is minus 3 halves plus 2, which is 1 half. So that means the solutions are the x1, y1 solution was 2, 8, and the x2, y2 solution was minus 1 half, 1 half. And if you remember the graph that we just did, those are exactly the points we found on the graph. So. We've done this algebraically and graphically. Things were very different. We sort of had to use our own common sense in solving these, not like linear systems, but at least we could get through it without too much trouble. Here's another one in which case both of the equations are nonlinear, just to try one of these. Here it is, x squared plus y squared equals 13, and x squared minus y equals 7. There's my system. This is 1 and this is 2, and these are both nonlinear in this case. And I hope that you recognize the first one, x squared plus y squared equals 13. You should remember from the very, very beginning of this course that that is the equation of a circle. It is a circle centered at the origin, with radius, the square root of 13. Just thought I'd point that out. Let's look at the solution now. First, I want to rewrite the second one. And that will give me a system. The circle, the first one is in standard form. I know what to do with it, so I'm going to leave it. x squared plus y squared equals 13. The second one, if I solve for y, becomes y equals x squared minus 7. That's 1 and 2. That is obviously now a parabola. So I have a parabola, and if I write up here, this is a circle. So I have a parabola and a circle that I will see intersecting on the picture, and I'd like to know where those intersection points are. So how am I going to solve this system? Well, here comes a little, uh, doing this algebraically first, here comes a little bit of insight. Notice that there's an x squared that's common to both of them, and x squared is the only appearance of x. If we then solve for x squared or substitute for x squared in one of them, then we'll have something only in y. So we, that's unusual from what we've done before, but it's not too far afield. So we'll substitute from 2 into x squared in 1. 
And if I replace this x squared by this x squared, now this x squared here would be x squared equals y plus 7, right, if I solve for x squared. Substitute that in above, what do we get? y plus 7 plus y squared equals 13. Well, that's an easy parabola, or rather, that's an easy quadratic in y. So let's move everything over, move the 13 over. So I'll rewrite it as y squared plus y minus 6 equals 0, because the 7 minus 13 is minus 6. And now I have a quadratic, and I'm lucky here that this is a quadratic that factors. So I have a quadratic that can be written as y plus 3 times y minus 2 equals 0, therefore y equals minus 3, or y equals 2. We've done these many times before. So we have y. We can now get x. To get x, we can use either of the two forms. And uh, since we already have x squared is equal to y plus 7, written down. Let's go ahead and use that form. So x squared will then be equal to, there are two cases. Let's break this up, y equals minus 3 case. x squared will be equal to, let's see if I box that in to separate it off. x squared in this case will be minus 3 plus 7, which is 4. So that means x is plus or minus 2. And that corresponds to the y equals minus 3. And if y equals 2, what will correspond to it? x squared equals y plus 7. That's 2 plus 7, which is 9. So that means x is plus or minus 3 here. So now we have four points. In fact, we can go ahead and list them over here. We have the points 2, minus 3, and minus 2, 3. That's from these two. And then here, I have 3, 2, and minus 3, 2. That's from these two. So it looks like I have four intersection points. And again, that's unusual, because remember, with linear systems, you either have none or one or an infinite number. You'll never have a number like four. So this is very different. So there are the four points. Let us go ahead and look at the graph. And the window I will look on is minus 9 to 9 by minus 7 to 5. And the reason I chose minus 9 to 9, by the way, is so that my circle looks like a circle. You may remember that in order to graph a circle, we have to write it, for the calculator purpose, in two equations. And I will go ahead and write those here. So to remind you, I have to write it as y equals plus 13 minus x squared and y equals minus. 13 minus x squared. So you see I've taken the circle, the x squared plus y squared equal 13. I've solved for y and I've got these two semicircles. The plus one is the upper semicircle. This is the lower semicircle. It has to be written this way to put it in the calculator. Now just for the record, here's the other one, x squared minus 7, the parabola. Then if you graph these, here is the kind of picture you end up with in that window. So let me draw that there, and then the axis here. The circle turns out to be something like that. It is centered at the origin. And then the parabola comes down. It is symmetrical here, comes up the other side. So there are the four points of intersection that we predicted from our algebraic solution. And what are they exactly? This one is the point minus 3, 2. This one is the point. 3, 2. This one is the point minus 2, minus 3. And this last one is the point 2, minus 3. And there we have it. That is the second of the two examples of solving a system of nonlinear equations. I'm not going to do any more, but I hope that gives you the flavor of how these are done. And this will be the end of Unit 6. And we'll move on now to the next unit.